Be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, make us worthy in the abundance of your grace and mercy to glorify your resurrection with pure hearts, to celebrate your victory with holy hymns, and to proclaim your might with pure tongues. We thank you for your love and worship you crying out. Christ is risen, he is truly risen. To you be glory to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the living and immortal One who gave life to his people by his cross and salvation to his church and happiness to his flock by his resurrection. When he appears, he shall give joy to his inheritance. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. We worship and praise you, O only begotten Son. You descended into the darkness of the tombs and worked wonders in the realm of the dead. By your resurrection you freed the captives, and by your voice you awakened the righteous and the just who had gone to their rest in the sleep of death. 
You gather the nations to worship you and to proclaim your salvation. They rejoice and they cry out. On Friday the king endured pain and was crucified, and today victory has been achieved by his resurrection. On Friday a lance pierced his holy side, and today in his compassion the waters of baptism flow. On Friday he was crowned with thorns, and today he has adorned his church with a crown of splendor. Today is the day of rejoicing in the resurrection. Today is the day of rejoicing for all who have gone to their rest in the hope of the resurrection. Today, the fragrance of this incense, the church and her children celebrate and sing hymns of glory, saying, O Creator of life, you have saved us by your passion and have given us life by your resurrection. Now renew our image by your grace, Clothe our bodies with the power of the Spirit, so that we may shine in the robe of glory, and in its light see you, the true Bridegroom. In your grace make us and all the faithful departed worthy of your heavenly kingdom that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. sacrifice yourself for us, we give you thanks. O incense of forgiveness, we worship you for you have brought us close to your Father. Enriched us by your birth, purified us by your baptism, sanctified us by your crucifixion, reconciled us to the Father by your resurrection, raised us up by your ascension, and adorned us with the gifts of your Spirit. Now, O Lord, accept our incense and fill us always with your sweet fragrance 
so that our tongues may never cease in giving thanks to you, now and forever. Kaddishat, Aloha Kaddishat, Chayel Tono Kaddishat, Loha Yehuta, Shihod Komen, is rejoicing for her shepherd truly rose Christ who died for his people conquered death to give new life God you accepted what the just had offered you now accept in your A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and your children forever. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vain glory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourself each looking out, not for his own interests, but for everyone or those of others. Have among yourselves the same attitude that is also yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something he grasped. Rather, he emptied himself taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. <coughs> because of this, God greatly exalted him 
and bestowed on him the same that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Praise be to God always. Alleluia. For the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, who proclaimed life to the world. Let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Apostle Matthew writes, After the Sabbath, as the day one of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and then sat upon it. His appearance was lightning, and his clothing was white as snow, and the guards were shaken with fear because of him, and they became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee, and there you shall see him. Behold, I have told this to you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful, yet overjoyed, and they ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way, and he greeted them. They approached, they embraced his feet, and they did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they shall see me. This is the truth, peace be with you. Do not be afraid. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. 
During this week, on an occasion, we had to cons- we thought about and considered about presence. This choice, which is something done by us to be present. Not just a question of existence, but presence. The trees, the rocks, the bunny rabbits, all these things, they exist. And they are, in that sense, present. Obviously, you can sit under a tree. But the notion of presence is much more profound. It is a choice that we make. And as we thought earlier this week when we talked about during the Passion of our Lord, the presence of our Lord is the choice of God to be present among us in his incarnation, something very unique. And presence, we mentioned on a human level, is something that we learn how to actually do. It's the way we converse, to learn how to listen, to learn how to speak, and to be able to actually, by hearing the other person, be present to them. We all know of families who live basically as strangers under the same roof, who bump into each other on occasion around the microwave. It's tragic. That is not a coherent family. That's not presence, because these individuals are not present to one another, which means they do not share what is one of the, the most profound human gift that we actually have, which is to be able to be present, which means ultimately to share our person. This is why with people that we have come to appreciate, we love spending time with them. Because what they're doing as they speak to us is they're unpeeling layer by layer by layer to reveal who they are, the person. Because when you consider what a person is, a person is obviously distinct, not just a human being. Persons are also angels. God is triune, we know, three in person. Personality is the most mysterious thing that exists in all of the cosmos and ultimately is a reflection in the cosmos of the triune person who is God. So think about what is person. There's a number of people that may live at the same address. They share that number, 39 Main Street. They may share the same last name as a family, but that doesn't make them all the same person. They all share the same human nature. Every human being is a human being, not more, not less. You can't say we're more human or less human. It's a human being. And yet every single one of them is distinct in their subsistence and unique from the creation of the world and never to be duplicated until the day of judgment. That is a reflection of the divinity of the triune person, which is God, which is created in each of these human individuals of person. And what belongs to that person centrally, personally, and the only thing that truly is I, is the intellect and the will, the ability to think, the ability to love, the ability to choose, The intellect and the will are the only things in which of all of creation cannot be touched by anything other than God. So that the human person, what they are, is an individual, and when we say cannot be touched, even the devil cannot touch your mind, cannot touch your will. He can play with your imagination, he can throw you across the room, or in the case of St. John Marie Vianney, he can set your room on fire, He can do all kinds of things. He can move a planet. Because for an angel to move a pencil, to move a table, to move a human being, to move a building, to move a planet is all the same because they're not bound by the laws of material nature. They are immaterial. They are spirit. And yet, even those beings cannot touch the human mind and cannot touch the human will. So that 1970s saying, The devil made me do it. Useless excuse. Cannot touch the will, cannot make. Now, he can pull up all kinds of images on the imagination, because that's part of our material being, and can make us fall into sin by our choice, because he just simply plays by the images in our minds. And so the human person has to be something revealed. I don't know your individual minds. You do not know mine. We can get hints of it by being around people, but unless they reveal themselves to us, 
We have no idea who they are. We know what they are, human and rational and beings and that, we know that. But we don't know who they are unless they reveal to us. And that is why the foundation of all personal revelation is love. Because love is the only thing that motivates, well, one, one person to sit across the table from me and listen to me jabber for hours on end. And love is also the only reason why I'm even inclined to jabber about these things for hours on end. Love is what opens the person. Love is what reveals that inner untouchability. And of course, when we come to the divine person, the three persons, the triune, unique God, that personality is infinite and transcendent from us and can only be known by us when he speaks. I'm leading up to all this because on this Saturday of the great light that we now hold vigil at our Lord's tomb, Saturday of the great light is central to the entire work of salvation. Now, for those of us who have experience with the Latin church, Saturday is just a day that nothing happens on. But in the Eastern tradition, they have, received, they have retained the ancient idea that the work of salvation is what is accomplished when our Lord's descent into hell. We say it in the Apostles' Creed. It's quick. It's a few words. We say it each day with our rosary. And yet it is the very central aspect in which the person of God is revealed in Sheol, in the place of death. In the place of death where everything that we own and have are stripped from us. So when we talk about that untouchability of the human mind and of the human will, it's because everything else can be touched. You can steal my things, you can burn my house down, you can kill me, but you can't touch my mind. You can't touch my will. That will always be free. And that essence of personality is what our Lord does in his descent into Sheol. So if you want to think about in the incarnation, remember this is God personally who joins and divinizes the man, Jesus Christ, so that there is one person, two natures, who are born of the womb, who is born of the womb of, the, of, of Mary of Nazareth. So that when he dies, as a man dies upon Calvary, God dies on Calvary. But what it means that in this death, this rending, this stripping away of the material and the immaterial elements of the one single individual, what we call the soul, the spirit, that soul descends into the place of the dead, which the Greeks call Hades, and that we call Sheol. And in that place of the dead, when our Lord appears there among the dead, as dead, he is also divine. He is also God. That's why when you've seen good artists who have done like the Stations of the Cross, and they come to the 13th and the 14th station, well, remember Station 12, our Lord dies on the cross. 13 is the descent, 14 is being buried. The good artist will always show, our Lord will have a halo around him on every single one of them. Because even in his death, that body is divine. So also in his death, that soul is divinized. So that when our Lord appears among the dead on Saturday of the great light, which is why we call it Saturday of the light, it is the moment among the dead where the person of God reveals himself to all of those who have been waiting for his arrival. If you noticed in the hymn that we had this morning or last night or whatever day it was, since this is the marathon of grace this week, there is an image that when our Lord appears among the dead, I think it was this morning, that in when our Lord appears among the dead, they very beautifully say that Adam, the father of us all, kneels in adoration before him, the new Adam. It's a very beautiful image to think of the individual who wounded us all, he and his wife, to give us something that limped along in the next generation and every generation after that until the day of judgment. And yet to be recovered by wisdom and by his repentance, he finds himself among the just waiting in what was called the bosom of Abraham. 
and waiting for that moment that then, when the new Adam appears, revealing who he is personally in his death, among all of the just who have waited for this moment for centuries, that he comes and he kneels and does homage and adoration before the Messiah. That is the descent into hell. It is a redemption of all of the centuries from the dawn of creation. It is the redemption then of the past. It is the redemption of those who were dying at the same time that our Lord died. Because it's not just our Lord who died at that moment. There are thousands and probably hundreds of thousands of people across the planet who were dying on that same day on Good Friday. And while our Lord as man died upon Calvary, he simultaneously judged them as the Lord God as these souls left the earth. And among those just, like the good thief and the bad thief that we had last night with only one candle lit on the altar, he was to find Dismas, to find him in paradise that day before the revelation of his person in that glory that shone light to all of those from the past, those of the present, and in that descent of hell is also the redemption of the future because all of us at some point are going to descend to Sheol. And so the next time you recite the Apostles' Creed and you zip through those few words and he descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead, Remember the magnitude of the cosmic work of the revelation of the person of God in its very depth, because nothing strips us more than death, and therefore God incarnate in his death reveals who he is personally. So as we keep vigil at the tomb, may the Lord God enlighten our minds, the untouchable. May he inflame our wills with the desire to know him face to face, person to person. And may he give us also the generosity on this earth to desire to share with other persons this revelation of the person of God through the charity which is within us that we have this union and the desire for union with the other persons who are around us. There is nothing more beautiful than friendship. There is nothing more beautiful than charity which is enlivened by the light of the gospel. That is the revelation of Saturday of the great light. That is the revelation that the personality that has been given to us is our greatest gift and augmented by grace by being engraft engrafted into the incarnation. God has given us the ability to become so much more than we were merely by being born into this world. So may this light on the great Saturday as we hold vigil be a radiance for us, each one of us, and a path of charity to ultimately see person to person, face to face, the infinite good one who loves us beyond all description. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. To us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was the time of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified by the conscious power. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has so many prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. sheets for the special transfer hymn for the resurrection in your pews. Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life in your imperishable kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, St. Marin, and St. Jude. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered for the repose of Dana Allen Chapman. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
할렐루야 Continue with the anaphora of St. John Chrysostom on page 876. 876. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we who have remained in your divine love be made worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with the holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. O Lord, on high, hidden from all creation, you are peace, reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin. You are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions, and in the abundance of your grace, accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, and through your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, you are adored by all angels, bless you, humanity exalts you, and all creation glorifies you. Look upon your children who call out to you with purity and holiness. May we offer you this acceptable sacrifice that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. Truly, it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, and praise the majesty of the one consubstantial Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our thanks. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices, and with sweet melodies proclaiming.
Glory to you, O God, the Heavenly Father, for you have exalted our weak human nature. In your mercy you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. He dawned from the Holy Virgin like a ray of light from a bright cloud. He took the form of a slave, yet truly he is the Son of your majesty. He willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb, that we may be born again from a spiritual womb. He became our brother, so that through his grace we may become your children and heirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba. He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us. For he is your only Son. Do this in memory of me, each time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember my death until I come again. can comprehend that you willingly emptied yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin, who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured, who can praise your plan of salvation for us. We can only ask of you, a lover of all people, that the sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your altar in heaven the dwelling place of your hidden divinity, in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice, may we be worthy of the forgiveness of our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you, nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood. So make us worthy to be one with you in holiness, as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, O Lord, as we, your 
sinful children, receive your graces. We thank you for them and because of them. Let this bread, the body of Christ our God, be for us a pledge of the life to come. A body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light. A blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. O Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, grant that it may be for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and the everlasting joy and eternal life with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church, which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith, and guide them in peace and security. We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, the Shout of Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the venerable priests, the chaste deacons, the pure subdeacons, and all the orders of the church. Teach them the word of truth, so that they may spread it faithfully, with justice and holiness. May they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them, give them the proper means to accomplish your will, and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. For the poor and the dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and the distressed, and for those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember the Holy Fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors, especially the Holy, glorious, and blessed, ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your Holy Church to your Son, glorious St. Stephen, the Archdeacon and first martyr, and all who pleased you and professed your Holy Name, we pray to you, O Lord. O Lord For all the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints, and in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions, hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will. 
that in all sun and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. O Lord, you are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. For your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory forever. O Lord, our Lord, you sent us your only Son, who is the radiance of your eternity, and he accomplished his plan of salvation for us, that we may come to you. May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are God, now and forever. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy that your glorious name may be made holy in us, that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. O Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts and let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. 
Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
Again and again, we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, O compassionate and merciful one. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these, your gifts and graces, and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy, so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls, for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for eternal life. You are blessed and your kingdom is holy. 
And we raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your Spirit. O oh God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us, protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the life-giving cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Who oh, Christ is risen. That's good. Not very Eastern, but it was good. <clears throat> so I certainly wish you all, so we'll try this again. Christ is risen. He is truly risen. Meshiho komen kabro. You have it in the bulletin. Mishiho komen kabro. Shariroith kom. Mishiho komen kabro. Shariroith kom. One more time, third time's the charm. Mishiho komen kabro. Well done. We won't even try the Arabic, so forget it for the moment. So I wish you certainly great blessings during this season of light and during Bright Week and this whole Paschal season of Easter. May the blessings come down. It is always beautiful to see you and your fidelity. And also just as a reminder at the end, for any visiting or socializing, please take it outside so it's actually nice out. So not, don't have the speaking and talking and visiting inside the church. I wish you all the abundant blessings of the glorious resurrection. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.